All right, I'm uh, still working on getting this dash, lower dash off so I can get to the uh, telescoping motor on this Lexus LS430. Now, I'm gonna point out where some of the screws are. There's a screw there. I can only find one. I was told there was two. I don't really see two anywhere. It doesn't mean there isn't, I just can't see it. And uh, so, but there are, is this black panel underneath here. And sorry for the video quality. You can imagine how hard it is to remove this stuff and at the same time do a video that I think is acceptable for people who might want to do it. There's a screw there. I think it's an eight millimeter. And there's one over here. It's an eight millimeter. So I've already loosened them, as you can imagine. Try to get some alums, some lumens off of it. On it, I mean, drop it. And it's also a nice Phillips. So you have two choices, Phillips or an eight millimeter. I broke them free with an eight millimeter. And we go, We've got the two screws there. And then this panel just pops out. I assume there's some sort of snap. At least it was supposed to pop out. Oh, I see, it's the carpet that's holding it back. Well, that's easy enough to take care of. And there is some stuff attached to it. So, get the carpet out of the way. Drop this down. There's some lights connected to it. I'm trying to get some pictures of it. So, and you can see some control panels put here. So just gonna disconnect those. Gonna disconnect this and drop it all the way out because this is the next step. So I'll do that. I'll do it off camera. Everybody knows how to remove clips and hooks and connections. So I'll be back. All right, everybody's oriented. We've already seen the black panel taken off. I've taken off all of these connections here. Thank goodness they're color coded. The blue one goes to a blue, black goes to a black, white goes to a white. So you you shouldn't have any trouble hooking them back up. The next step is we're gonna look at this bolt, which is a 10 millimeter, and this bolt which is a 10 millimeter. Let's see if I can get some light on that. And you can sort of see that I can move the whole console, the lower half. So I'm gonna remove those. Now, the reason I'm going to this much trouble to document how it's done is because if someone else wants to do it, the lack of confusion is very helpful. Now I put the screw that I took the black panel off with back in its location so I don't lose it and I don't confuse it with some other screw. So this is what the back black panel was holding on to. Plus there are little indentations here. There's some clips on the black panel. So the idea is to make this as easy for someone in the future to do it as it is hard for me to do. Just trying to be helpful. All right, just a little bit of advice, getting some orientation. When I'm taking apart a dash, I wear clean gloves. And people say, well, why do you wear clean gloves? Because I hate having my hands ripped apart by some piece of plastic that I didn't know was hiding behind another panel. And trust me, if you've taken enough dashes apart, you know as you're gently pulling, 
you'll somehow slip and the plastic will cut you or something will cut you and life will suck. So I've loosened up this lower panel, but I'm gonna show you some of the steps I did so that you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Now the lighting is terrible, I admit that. I'll be the first one to say the lighting is terrible. But hopefully the explanation along with the crummy lighting will help you. This is obviously part of the dash on a left-hand drive. And you can see how behind here there is a clip that fits into this hole. And let me pull this out. And I had to use one of my panel tools plastic yeah. oh, God, it was easier getting it out the first time so it has it's already fallen it has a connector obviously here because it's got wires so I popped this out to relieve the pressure on the top of this now you'll notice that there's this ring here it's got a little index on it. And if you look up in here, it's hard to see, but there's actually a slot for this little index up here. So when you're reassembling it, this presses on in only one way. Uh, yes, because it's got a little index, a key, like a Woodruff key, and it fits in to there, I'll try to show it later, but trust me, it's there and it sits right where the tip of my fingernail is. So I'll toss this over to the side. Now, I gently, you see how there is a hook that goes into there. Sorry, I gotta move a little piece of equipment right now as I'm chit-chatting. Uh, that little hook pops out. Now, once again, I used my panel tool here to gently pry it out after I removed that top piece that we just talked about. I did the same thing over here. I did not remove this. I probably should have, uh, but it came out all on its own. So the panel appears to be lo loose now, and I'll show you some of the areas where there are little clips. Hopefully you can see it. I'll try to get some light. You can see this spot right there and you can see there's a little clip and i believe you can see one over on the other side you can see let me get some light on it there's the little clip right there and the hook it goes into and that's important for both disassembly and assembly because when you're putting it back together you're obviously going to want this little clip inside that hole so the dash fits together nicely and i'm taking a look around there's a piece of plastic how that got there i don't know who cares it's not particularly relevant for this piece we got the screws out we got the screws out here and this whole assembly should now pop out there may be a wire holding it in yes there are wires holding it in so I have to release those. One of the techniques I use for releasing wires is both a pick and a flat screwdriver. I will press the little tab on it to release it, and then I'll take the flat screwdriver to slowly work its way up. And that tends to work well. Trying to yank on it, you don't want to yank on the wires. Yanking on the wires is bad. You don't want to be pulling on these wires. You'd like to sort of gently release the clip. Take the screwdriver and find a spot where you can gently work its way up. And if it goes, it goes easy. And if it's not going easy, just stop, rinse and repeat. Life goes on. So I will be back. Let's get a little orientation. Right side, steering wheel, left hand drive. I'm going to show you some items in here. Hopefully you'll be able to appreciate it. There's this hose. Hopefully my little arm doesn't get in the way. See this hose? 
it goes on this plastic piece right there. So why is there a hose on this plastic piece? Because hidden behind here are some wires and it appears to be the temperature sensor. So I assume that vacuum comes through this hose, comes past the wires like a mass sensor, senses the temperature and then adjusts it automatically. Now to get this connector off, I press down on the, God, I'm a terrible photographer. I pressed on this little clip and then I took my pick and slowly worked it in here and it just popped right out. And let's, there we go. Now we've got this side done. Now this side is very complicated because it's got a million connectors, as you can probably see. So I started with the hood release. And as you can see on the hood release, hopefully you can, it's a little hard to see for this camera. There's some Phillips screws there. And they're gonna be less loosened obviously with the Phillips screwdriver. But that's gonna come out. Then I'm gonna start working on all these electrical connectors here so that I can get this dash piece off. And there are a lot of them. So it'll take me a while. I always like to come in and give people a perspective of where I'm at. I've seen some videos where they suddenly go like this and you're going, where the hell are you? So we're on the driver's side. You can see we're working in this area. I'm gonna come up from the top. I got this clip off. Thank you, light. Appreciate all that help. I got this one out. They appear to be identical clips. I believe that the reason you know this one goes here is that this cable is longer. This one's shorter. And then I got this green one. Now, green one's going to be easy because green with green. And then below it is this beige one. God, I hope it's in focus. Let's see if I can make it in focus. Yeah, so we got green, beige, the short black one, and the longer one that's black, that's about an inch longer. Just so that when you're reassembling it, life doesn't kick you in the ass. Now, I did notice that when I took the emergency brake off, let's see if I can find that little devil. Took the two screws out, and you can see the screw holes there. Hopefully you can. I'm not muffling it up. But the important part is this little C-shaped clip. It slides on. So when you get this out, you just push it back and it comes out. It's the details, baby. It's the details. So I'll continue to work on this. I'll come back because I have something interesting to tell you. It's I'll always the details. So what I'm looking at is you see this clip and you see this connector. The clip fits, oh wait, I didn't do my perspective. This is where we're at. This clip, this V-shaped clip, goes on this piece of plastic. It just pulls right off. And then this beige connector goes into the lower one. You don't have to take the upper one off because obviously it goes with the whole assembly. And then the last piece I did, see I have AFS? which I think is automatic light something. It has this gray connector right there, which I'll point to, and it came right out. So I currently have the whole assembly off. Oh my God. I see where the guys that do this get paid, the money they get paid. I did miss this clip. I saw these two earlier, but that clip, oh, let's see if I can even see where it goes. I assume it goes somewhere back here. Sorry, I can't point it out to you. Some things I just cannot do. So clip, clip, clip there. This clip goes there. There's probably a clip that goes here and there. I just don't know where they are. I'll struggle with that when I start putting it back together. Oh, I see, that's this clip and this clip. 
Yes, okay, so this clip and this clip go here and here, which I believe makes sense, yes. And then I should be able to find where these clips go. Can't be that hard, but apparently today is a challenge for me. I'll find them. But I think that's pretty good information. Now I've got to explore the steering column and see if I can find the motor. I may have to take this off. Yes, this is an airbag. I'm going to have to take this bolt and this bolt and then drop it down so that I can gain access. Let me get my screwdriver to the column. I believe this is the tilt motor and the this is the motor back here that runs the telescopic motor. The tilt motor is actually pretty easy, I've been told, because it's this bolt, this bolt, it slips down. But of course, my tilt motor works fine. I'll be back. I love you. Orientation video. I'm coming in. You'll hear the bing dinging in the background because that is the um, wonderful world of you've got the door open and the ignition on. This is the telescopic screw, and the motor is right there. I was wrong before. Let's see if I can see a better view. Now, to show you the tilt motor, which is right here, you see that Allen there? God, I'm a terrible photographer. That's it, and I'll show you it in operation, just so you believe me. There it is. Got to get the camera straight. Up, down. Hopefully you can see it turning. That is the tilt motor. Now, since I'm here and I've got a view, I'll see if I can point it out. This is going to be the telescopic motor. So you got to re loosen that bolt. And there's a bolt somewhere up there that I've previously seen. So I think I'm getting much closer. Now, here's the dilemma. This is the airbag, and it's hold in, held in by this 10 millimeter, this 10 millimeter, this 10 millimeter, and finally, this 10 millimeter. It has a connector over here. Oh God, I hope you can see it right there. But airbags kind of scare me. They go boom. So one of the things I always do when I'm working on a car, I'm gonna turn off the noise. Is I always have a trickle charger on the battery. And I have that because obviously I'm screwing around with a lot of things electrical and I don't want the battery to go dead. And this charger, when it's green, means the battery is fully charged. Now, so what does that have to do with the airbag? Well, airbags require electricity to go boom. There's a little charge in them, they ignite. But even more importantly, on some cars, if you screw with the airbag or disconnect it from the system, the car will go into a hard default, which my understanding is only the dealer can fix. I'm not sure that a 2005 Lexus is that way, but I don't want to find out. That would really suck to go through all this work, potentially disconnect the airbag, even though I don't see how to do it. What I'm going to do is take these bolts out and drop it down sideways. I'll pad it with something and then discover that I have to go to the dealer to get the airbag put back in the system. So this is the knee airbag. It is my last, it appears impediment. I do have a ventilation somewhere over here. Let's see if I can get a picture. Yeah, see that plastic thing way back there? I'll try to touch it. That is the outlet for heat down to your feet. Heat to your feet. So I don't know how that's gonna play into it, but I'll get back to you. Bye.